Hi, guys. It's Michelle and Lon. Hello. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to our webinar presentation today, which is called How to Create Quick and Easy Videos with PowerPoint. My name is Lon Naylor. I'm the dude down in the corner there, and I've been using PowerPoint since 1992, before it shipped to the public, actually. I was a senior engineer at Microsoft at the time, and I love using PowerPoint to create video content. And Michelle's been doing this quite a while, too, and she has uh, some good credentials with that. You want to just let folks know who you are briefly, Michelle? Yes. Hi, I'm Michelle Shane, and I used to work in corporate, IBM and AT&T, and then I had kids and stopped working and started trying to make money online as a virtual assistant. So I did that for about a year and then met Lon actually over the phone. We had a mutual affection for Camtasia and we decided to partner up and do some Camtasia stuff. And from there, it led into well, PowerPoint, you use a lot of PowerPoint with Camtasia, and we were using that and finding out you could make some amazing videos just with PowerPoint by itself. So now we're also showing people how to make these quick and easy PowerPoint videos with no Camtasia at all. Yep. So that's all fun and good. And uh, today what we're going to do is I'm just going to hit on the agenda real quick. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means, <laughs> PowerPoint for video. And a lot of folks don't even know that that's actually possible. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of rundown on why this is kind of a deal and uh, why we might want to use such a thing. But the bulk of the presentation is actually going to be, I'm going to hand it back over to Michelle, and she is going to build us a video from scratch. Uh, so looking forward to that. And along the way in doing that, we're going to, of course, show you some of the capabilities of PowerPoint, some of the, the good ideas and things uh, as far as design goes. So there's going to be a lot of good value in that, I'm sure. Shell's going to, like I say, make a video from scratch. And at the very end, uh, we do have a special training on this for those of you that would like to hang out with us for more. Uh, if you do stay to the end, I have a pretty darn sweet little freebie for you. It's a PowerPoint template, and you aren't going to believe how cool this thing is. So I'm going to give you that and a detailed tutorial on how to modify it. And of course, we'll save some time at the end for questions and answers. So as we go along, pop those in the question box, and I won't leave till everybody's question is basically answered. That's kind of how I roll with these kinds of things. So let me just kind of preface this whole thing a little bit when we're talking about video. Did you know that any video is actually a presentation of some type? So it doesn't really matter what you're using video for, and especially as it relates to business. We use it for affiliate marketing, review videos, YouTube traffic, all these different aspects here. But I want you to think about this just for a moment, is that even if you're just firing up your smartphone and capturing yourself talking about, oh, a product uh, or giving a review or teaching somebody something, you're literally doing a presentation and almost any kind of video then, if we just kind of go with this flow here, any video is actually a presentation. You're conveying information in such a way as to maybe persuade someone to take some type of action, to teach, train, uh, or convince, to establish credibility, trust, and rapport, all of those things are really kind of wrapped up into this whole thing of a presentation of information. And if that's the case, think about what you've seen maybe on stage at a seminar or something like that. Uh, some presentations are great, right? And some presentations, yeah, not so much. So it's basically going to boil down to if we are going to use video as our presentation platform, we really want to present well because basically 
you never get a second chance to make a great first impression. And this is never more true than in the case with online video for whatever purpose, because people's attention span is less than your average gnat would be <laughs> when it comes to this. And I'm sure everyone uh, is a party to, you know, scrolling through videos and things like that and, and really understands that if you want to make a good first impression, your video content needs to be uh, worth watching, right? So if you didn't know this already, there's a tool for that, for creating presentations, and it's called PowerPoint, right? I'll bet you almost everybody here has PowerPoint. But here's something that just a stunning number of people that I talk to don't seem to know. Did you know built right in to PowerPoint? It's right there. There's a button right there that says record slideshow. And what that does is it lets you go into what's called record slideshow mode, which Michelle is going to demonstrate for you. And it will capture all of your slides, all of your animations, all of your slide builds, all your narration, and anything that is in your slides literally as if you were standing up on a stage and giving a presentation, it will record all of that, save it inside the slide deck itself, and then with a couple of additional button presses, it's gonna spit out a high dev video on the other end. A lot of folks just don't even know that, right? So I just wanna kind of preface that again, is that after we record our video, PowerPoint has built into it the ability to kick that out, again, in a high-def fashion. And we'll demonstrate that for you. Now, why might we want to kind of consider this kind of content for video? Well, first of all, a presentation made with presentation software can certainly perform a multitude of those kinds of videos that I kind of showed before. Affiliate marketing. YouTube content. When it comes to having a successful YouTube channel, for example, kicking out consistent and yet high quality content is literally like the name of the game there. But one thing that kind of holds a lot of folks up when we're talking about video, and everybody knows they need to be using video, right? Well, there's so many things that are just complex about it. A lot of people are reticent to get a good camera set up and lights and backdrops and all that good kind of stuff. Well, that's not the only kind of video that turns out to be extremely effective for making sales, for building a list, for building a business, for establishing credibility, trust, and rapport all those different kinds of things, uh, using PowerPoint for video lets us cleave out a huge amount of complexity in the whole thing when it comes to kicking out video content, right? And we can add things like camera video and all that good stuff, but again, the punchline is that at the end of the day, being able to create some compelling visual video content, we're gonna use a tool that is relative to creating that visual content, and that's PowerPoint. So I'm not gonna go too much on with that because Michelle has got a lot of stuff to kind of cover. So I'm gonna let her jump in and go ahead and create a certain kind of video, a tip video. Now, I will kind of say, why did we choose this to be a demo? And a lot of folks, if they're thinking about using video online, they're thinking about, oh, I'll make a sales video, okay? Well, first of all, I'll say that making a video is not a video marketing strategy, but here's kind of the other thing. You can make a great sales video on your sales page and you can drive traffic to it. You can drive a ton of traffic to it. And your conversion rate, if it's one, two, maybe 3% would be phenomenal. Okay, your better tactic when using video for marketing is to put out content that helps establish you as a trusted expert to establish credibility, trust, and rapport because people buy from people they know, like, and trust a whole lot more than they do landing on a cold sales page and watching a video from someone they don't know. 
So this kind of content that we can create quickly and easily, as you'll see in this demonstration, is going to maybe foster a little bit of that credibility, like, and trust uh, is one of the best kinds of video you can create and one that is PowerPoint is uniquely suited for. So Michelle, why don't you go ahead and kind of show us what you got Alrighty. going. Alrighty, well I'm going to be sharing with you a video. Alright, so let me turn the volume up a little bit and play this. And after I play this for you, it's only about a one, one and a half minute video, I'm going to show you how I created it from beginning to end. and it actually only took me about 30 or 40 minutes to create the whole video in PowerPoint and you might you guys might be able to do it even faster once you get good at it because I was trying to be perfect okay so here we go you've heard it before Americans just aren't getting enough fruits and vegetables are you one of them and as the foundation of a healthy diet consider fruits and vegetables your fountain of youth but the hard facts tell us that over 70% of us are failing to meet the recommended five a day. Hi there, I'm Penelope Green of PenelopesVeggies.com and I'm here to show you three simple ways to get you eating more veggies and fruits today. Adding fruit to pancakes, waffles, or oatmeal makes it extra delicious and adding veggies to your eggs helps you get an extra serving or two in the morning. Sometimes it's okay to be sneaky in the kitchen. Try grating or pureeing veggies and adding them to muffins, meatloaf, and sauces. You can make your own vegetable crisps that end up cheaper, healthier, and quite possibly the most fun way to eat your fruits and vegetables. Kale, mustard greens, collard greens, they'll all have you crunching and munching away on the delightful twist on greens. Just a few small and very simple changes to make you eat better, feel better, and create an overall new sense of well-being. To learn more and to get your downloadable veggie tip guide, go to PenelopesVeggies.com. So Michelle, basically what you're doing here is you're just providing like three quick tips to your audience who are interested in eating healthier, right? The maybe even the fitness crowd or something yeah. like that to establish yourself as like the expert and then at the end we'll have a call to action that basically says uh, go ahead and sign up for our free guide and that's where you can get people into an email sequence send them more videos and content and after that give them you know the opportunity to maybe work with some of her products and things like that Thank you, Lon. Yes, because it was playing in my ear the whole time. <laughs> so I'll have the link to this for you guys at the end of the webinar if you want to take a look and for yourself and see what I came up with. And now I am going to show you the slides real quick that are in PowerPoint here. These are the slides. That I only have eight slides here. And below the slides, I uh, paste it in in the notes section what the script is. So before I created these slides, I thought to myself, okay, what would I want to say in my video? And what would I want to show? And I created what's called a storyboard. So many of you guys have probably already heard of the word storyboard before, but I just make mine in Microsoft Word. I just create it with a table. And I create two columns and on the left I put what I want to say, what is my message here, and on the right column I think about what I might want to show. Sometimes I'll find something in advance and paste it in and sometimes I'll find something later when I get to PowerPoint. So there is my script. See it's only about two pages long and that makes my tips video. All right, so working off this storyboard or script, whatever you want to call it, I will put these slides together for you in PowerPoint. And just to let you guys know that I am using what's called PowerPoint 365 or Office 365. It's been out, a, I think, a couple of years now, and it includes PowerPoint 2016. So we're almost at 2019. So if you haven't upgraded I would suggest you do because it's got some really cool new features, but I'm going to be showing you some workarounds. If you haven't upgraded and you don't have things like the designer, which you'll see in a moment, 
there are other ways to get cool design. So just real quick, here is where you can get Office 365. It's, uh, you can get it as low as 50 bucks for the whole thing, for the Professional Plus. You can also just get it for a month if you want to just create a video uh, for $5.99. And I, I think I started out paying just monthly a subscription price, and now I just went ahead and sprung for the whole year. It gets you constant updates. Uh, every month they're coming out with something new, so that's why I like it very much. All right, so you're going to learn some, some cool new tricks and tips, and, and hopefully it's going to inspire you to put your own tips video together, and, and that way you'll be branded as an expert. Now, I'm not Penelope, uh, nor am I an expert at fruits and veggies, but I thought this was a good topic that everybody could relate to because I wanted to do a little more research on it myself. But I'm going to create this from scratch in front of your very eyes. So I'll uh, click on File in PowerPoint, and I'll just say New. And we're going to start out, we're not, we don't, we rarely use any of these templates, Lon and I, rarely, rarely. Uh, there are some cool templates you can buy online, but often I start out with just a blank screen. And you think to yourself, oh my gosh, you know, this is a blank slide. It's like writing a novel or something with a blank page. but. Having a few features like the PowerPoint Designer, which you will see in a moment, really makes things a lot easier for you. So I'm going to just start out by going back to my storyboard and seeing what I was going to say and what I was going to use as an image. So I said here that I was going to have the text on screen called Your Fountain of Youth. So I'm going to control C, just use a keyboard shortcut, and paste it right here, your fountain of youth. And that looks pretty boring. <laughs> so I want to add a picture. So I said in my storyboard that I would just find a, an image of fruits and veggies. So because I don't have much artistic background and I don't really want to spend money on stock photos, I prefer to get them free when I can, I am going to go ahead and get some royalty-free, free stock photos right from within PowerPoint. Now, you can do that by using what's called an add-in. And if you go to the Insert menu, you can see what add-ins they have. So if I click on Get Add-ins, and I will choose All, you can see some of the, diff some of the different choices that they have here for things you can add right into PowerPoint. I happen to already have added in a program called Pexels, and if I do a little search for it, you can see that it's right here. I've already added it in, so I don't need to do that. It comes up right here on the Insert menu, and I'm going to find my free picture from the Pexels menu. So when it comes in, I'm just going to do a search for fruits, and veg -e tibbles and hit my enter key. And because I've already put this slide together, this deck together once, I kind of know which one I'm going to pick. So I'm going to pick this one. And let and me make just a quick point on that, Michelle. Uh, the reason she's using this particular add-in is this is a, actually a site that you can go to on the web. It's called Pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And the reason we like this is as you start creating visual content, you're going to find you want to use images and things like that. What you do not want to do is go to Google search and just start grabbing images off of, you know, whatever results come up. That is a copyright violation. So you're going to get stuck in the mud with all this copyright stuff. And oh, it's just a nightmare. Why we like Pexels? Because it is visual content, photographs, and video clips that are in the what's called the public domain. You don't have to worry about any of that crap, uh, any of that copyright stuff. You are free to use these in any way you want. So you can go to Pexels and search for stuff, but how cool is it that you actually use the add-in and right within PowerPoint you have access to the exact same images as a, in a search engine, right? So that's just one of the mm -hmm. tips to kind of get you going. Thanks, Lon. And um, if you noticed here, 
what came up on the right hand side is some design ideas. So that's that's something you get in uh, Office 365. Because I'm not artistic, I love this. I mean, I love it. It is just such a fast way. So now I am going to change this font to something I prefer because Calibri is a little overused. So I there's a font that I particularly like. It's called Open Sans extra bold. I can get open sans to come up here and then just go down here and choose extra bold. And I'm not going to use this extra piece here. So let's just delete that. And probably I would make this a little bigger. Let's see, just stretch it out. And I can just enlarge it. And probably most of you guys who have used PowerPoint know how to do that and of course you'll get the recording so I know I'm going a little quickly here but don't worry you will um, get a chance to watch this more slowly afterwards so now I'm really satisfied with this particular font and I want to use this font in every every part of my video and on every slide so instead of having to constantly keep changing the default font I am going to use what's called the slide masters so I'm going to click on view and then slide master and in this way I'm able to set the font and you'll see I'm, I'm going to set a color scheme as well that's going to work for every single slide so up here on the very top if I just go ahead and click here and choose my open sans because what I really want is the open sans extra bold there we go all right and while I'm in here uh, you'll be able to see that it has changed all the slides all the layouts everything to that particular style of font and also I would like to choose a color scheme and that way I'm not having to it keeps everything consistent from slide to slide and I'm not having to pick colors on every slide and and you'll see what I mean so I am not going to use the default office color scheme that comes up all the time I'm thinking fruits and veggies fruits and veggies right I'm going to go down here to green and just choose green all right so now it everything's going to be green when I pull up a shape if I pull up uh, the designer everything's going to be in that color scheme it's not just all green it's got some yellow and blue and all that in it so now I'm going to go back to the normal view and you'll see what will happen I'm going to choose new slide and ta-da, it's already in Open Sans Extra Bold. So now with this next slide, if you go back to the storyboard, you will see that it's only text. There's no pictures in it. So I'm going to se select just the text here because that is the text that kind of goes along with what I'm saying. I just went to Control-C, copied it, and I am going to right click and choose to paste it in with the destination theme now I know that I am not going to use any pictures in this one sometimes the designer doesn't pop up right away with that you sometimes need to invoke the designer when it doesn't see a picture coming in so I'll click on design ideas and let's see what it generates for me for this particular slide all right, so notice here, it, it, it knows I've got a theme color, and so it is picking things that are either neutral or have some of these theme colors with it. So I thought that was pretty good. And you know what? It gave me all different choices than it gave me the first time I was creating this slide deck. So although this slide deck won't look exactly like the last one, I think it's great that you're always getting brand new things. In fact, Michelle, why don't you go, go ahead and close Designer just for demo mm -hmm. purposes here and actually just click the Design Ideas button again. And like Michelle mentioned, what it does each time you do that is it goes out to the web and Microsoft servers kind of, you know, give it another think and another look. And a lot of times you'll get a few different design ideas so that's kind of yeah this worth, time worth I got knowing. the one that I that time I got the one that I used oh yep. you know what for some reason it changed it back to 
to Calibri, which I think is weird. Uh, once, as soon as I picked that, it turned it back to Calibri. But I'm going to change it back to Open Sans. Here, Open Sans, Extra Bold. All right. So nice. I'm going to move on to my third slide, number three. And this is a slide that we are not going to use the designer. Uh, for those of you guys who do not have Office 365 and you don't have the ability to use the designer, I'm just going to pull in a picture from my hard drive. This is going to be a picture of Penelope. She is the expert on greens. So if you go back to the storyboard, you will see there's a picture of Penelope. And I have, uh, I'm going to use a little animation on this one. So if you haven't used animation before, you will see some neat stuff here. I'm going to click uh, control. Well, I'm not going to control B actually. I'm going to um, right click and paste using the theme so it comes out with the Open Sans Extra Bold. But now I'm going to find an image from my hard drive. So Penelope is pretty good at taking images of herself. So she happens to have a picture. And there she is. And in this case, I'm going to just not you know, close the design ideas. And I'm going to put a pretty frame around this picture. I happen to like this tilted. A rotated Polaroid looking picture and I'm going to move her to the left and I am going to move this down. Maybe we'll make Penelope just a little bit bigger. And now I want to color a couple of these words to make them stand out a little more. So I'm going to select fruits and I'm going to use my font color, my eyedropper, and pick something from the fruit basket. So we'll go red on the fruits. And we will use probably a green color. Use the eyedropper there. Find a maybe a darker green in there. And I think that's cool. It stands out a little more. And I also want to put the name of her website on here, which I think I have in, oh, you know what, I didn't put it in the storyboard, but that's okay because I know what it is. It's Penelope's veggies.com. So I think I'm going to use some word art because I get a little bit of formatting with that. Um, if I choose one of these word arts, it already has a shadow built in and an accent color, and it's already in the, di the different colors that I chose as the theme for this, so I'm going to just type in penelopesveggies.com. Okay, Pen, penelopesveggies.com. Get rid of the your text here. We don't need that. Uh, maybe it's a little too big, so we will make that a little bit smaller to fit more nicely. And I think it's going to be nice to add a little animation. We haven't done that yet. So I would like for Penelope's Veggies to animate in. So I'm going to select this and go to the animation pane. Now, a lot of people simply use a fade or fly in, and that's fine. You can use that. Uh, PowerPoint has some great great uh, entrance animations that you may not have seen in the past. And one of Lon's favorites, because I asked him, which one should I use for the demo? He likes the Zoom, but he doesn't just like the Zoom. He wants to, he said, make it a little cooler. So we're going to make it even cooler. We're going to choose from the effect options and have it slide center. And not just that but we are going to make it animate in. What did we want to do by letter or by word, Lon, for this one, you think? Uh, for this one, by letter, I think. Let's just try that. Mm. And what she's doing here is just basically a couple of really simple uh, modifications. And this isn't something you have to do, but just to kind of show you that it's, it's really not that difficult if someone shows you how to do it, uh, and yet it ends up to be much much more interesting. 
So should we should we do on this one just a simple zoom, or do you want to add the effect options to this one too? What yeah, and one of the things I'll just kind of mention is that these animations are special effects. What we don't want to do is like overdo them. A special effect used too often ceases to be, you know, special. So it's not necessary to make everything, you know, flying in and whizzing all around. If I'm going to use multiple animations on a page, I'll probably use one for emphasis, which would have been her domain name there. And then for the other stuff, yeah, maybe I'll just fade it in right, if I'm going to use an animation at all. That way, we want people to, you know, stay focused on the message. But at the same time, using that one little extra emphasis effect provides something called leading the eye. When something moves a little more than everything else, psychologically what happens is it leads your eye to that particular piece of content. So we do things like that very specifically and very on purpose, right? So that's just a tip there. Nothing is by accident. I think I'll change the layout of this one just to get some new choices maybe from the designer to the title one. And wow, I haven't even inserted anything and it's already giving me ideas ideas for what I can put. So this particular one is going to have, if we go back to the storyboard, you'll see that uh, the tips start here. So tip one, boost your your breakfast. So I knew I had to find, find something online that was going to work for that. So let me paste that in boost your breakfast and I want an image though so this time instead of using pexels I'll just go out and find an online picture and I will type in here breakfast breakfast with fruit and since I've done this before I picked the pancake one it's amazing how many choices you get uh, these are all free royalty free and blah 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 so I'm going to pick this one. That's going to come in. Ready? Now, what you noticed at the bottom of that image, though, is that there is this thing called attribution. So it's called Creative Commons, and I don't want to get into all of that stuff. But basically, the creator of this photograph has said, yeah, folks can use it, but you need to let people know that I created it. And that's one of the reasons we like pixels. and. Uh, another site called pixabay.com and unsplash.com because they are the same way. You don't have to give attribution. But the cool thing about what the online search that Michelle just used does is it actually inserts the attribution that's required right at the bottom of the photo. So, yeah, sometimes you might yeah. have to use that kind <laughs> of content, but uh, you don't have to monkey around with all kinds of technical and legal hoops. Right, and you know what, just for the sake of this demo, I deleted it, but you will have to put it in there somewhere into your slides. So I, I chose uh, another, just for being speedy about this, I chose another design choice, and I'm going to change tip one to a color here from the strawberry. So now we've got tip one, pretty. We're halfway done already. I'm gonna hit new slide. And for this next one, I happen to already have an image uh, from my hard drive on this. And so I can just click here and add in the vegan pumpkin spice muffins. The, the problem with this one is it's it's not really the right size. I'm not going to use the designer for this. It'll show you a, a trick that Lon taught me. It's not exactly 16 by 9. These slides are widescreen, and that's called a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And this is not quite the right size, so I can stretch it out if I want to, and it might work okay with this particular one, but a fairly easy one, easy way to do this, uh, just to get it uh, to look nice and the, and the correct what's called aspect ratio is just to go to crop and go right down to 16 by 9, and now it crops it for you to the exact size. If I click off of it now, I can just stretch it over the page here. And now it looks great. 
And it and snaps then for this, to the exact size yeah, line. Yep. Yes, it, it snaps right on there. And now for this one, for those of you guys who don't have the uh, access to designer, I'm just going to insert a shape. So designer, if you really look at it, it's mostly a bunch of shapes. It really is. So if you're good with adding shapes, you don't have to necessarily even use the designer. But I love it because they're much more artistic than I am. I am going to take away the outline from this. And also, I'm going to make it transparent by clicking on Format Shape and Fill. That way I can see some of the some of the muffins underneath. So I'm going to maybe make it this much transparent because I want to put some text over it. But I still want, there, want everyone to see that there's muffins underneath. So let's see what the text is from the storyboard. It's, it's this, tip two, be a sneaky chef. So control C, go over here. And we have found out that unfortunately with shapes, it does not default to the open sands that I had chosen in the designer. So I, I'll i just scroll down and scroll back again. And I am going to just go ahead and center this on here. So that looks good. All right, so just a couple more slides to go here. New slide. Um, we are going to, um, you know what, this next slide is actually something pretty simple here. If you are good with a camera, and I just wanted to remind people that you don't always have to find pictures online all the time. Penelope happens to be a chef, and she just uses her iPhone to take, to take pictures of the food that she creates. So she already had pictures of kale, and you know, you can certainly do the same thing. You don't have to always, in fact, it can be very difficult sometimes I'm going to use something completely different here. It can be very difficult to find if, you're, if your expertise is in something that's a little bit more unusual. And it, I happen to pick fruits and veggies, you know, that was easy to find pictures. But when, you're, uh, when you have a niche that's a little bit more unusual, you might really have to go get the camera out. And then does everybody know how to basically uh, upload pictures to their computer and you know get it on their hard drive I find I'm just copying I'm not doing anything brand new here you guys that's why I'm saying just talking about other stuff control V everybody know how to do that because I sometimes would have difficulty figuring out how to get things off my camera and I have you know finally figured that out Wendy says no, but my son does. <laughs> so oh, there you go. Solution, if you've got right teenagers, yeah. yeah. And in fact, you know, this kind of content, it, it, we we mentioned a few things about you know copyright and uh, all that good stuff. You want to know how to avoid all that, even more than using royalty free or public domain stuff, and that is to create your own. If you are yeah. the content creator, you own the copyright, right? And you can do anything you want with it. Plus, it's automatically protected by copyright law and no one else can use it. So there you go. There you go. And by the way, if you missed this, I just changed the color and I changed it to capitalize each word. That's easy. That way you don't have to capitalize it when you're typing it. All right, so we're going to do something uh, really different here, really different. Uh, this is called Smart Art, and because this next slide would be a bulleted list, list of three, the three tips. This kind of goes over the three tips. I hate bullet points, so I try to avoid them if possible. And a great way to do that is to insert a Smart Art graphic. And I know it's a list, so I'm going to choose list. I already know which one I'm going to pick because obviously I've done this already. So I, I go through these and I'm going to go to this. So it comes in in the color of our color scheme, but there's a lot of things you can do. You know, you can change the colors. It'll give you all the color choices of our palette. So maybe I'll pick something a little darker. Uh, you can go here and, and choose all kinds of different 
things. Even the format has got some new things you can do with it, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. I know I'm not going to use a color, I mean a title, excuse me, so I'm going to get rid of that. And another thing is I want it to be a lot bigger than this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put in the text and then we'll kind of make our background a little bit cooler. So the things we want to put in are from the storyboard. It's boost your breakfast, be a sneaky chef, and recreate the tip. So we'll go boost your breakfast. I could have, I could have um, cut and paste you guys, but I just decided be a sneaky chef and then recreate the tip. Recreate the tip. Chips. The chip. The chip. The chip. Chip, 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 chip. Okay. So there we go. Now I I probably would go back and change all these to open stands. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now because I've got more to show you. Now, if I want some animation to go on along with these and I want these to come in one at a time, I am going to have to ungroup this because if I put an animation to it, the whole thing, including the triangle, will come in all together. So I don't want to do that. Okay, but I am going to ungroup it, but I'm going to go ahead and go to arrange and then ungroup. And actually for this, I have to do it two times because there's a group within a group. All right, so now I've ungrouped it twice. Everything is separated. I can go to animations and I'm going to click on this first one. I think I'll just use, I can't remember if I use Zoom again for this one, but yeah. I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to choose Zoom. And for that one, and in this one, do you want me to add an extra little effect to this one? Or should we just leave it at Zoom? No, let's go ahead and add a little extra to it. Okay, the slide center. Right. And, and then, then go to your we'll end. animate this by uh, letter or by word here. Let's do this one by word and just kind of see what it looks like. Okay. And you can just hit your preview button in the upper left-hand corner there. Doot, doot, doot. It looks okay. good. And so to apply these to the other ones, I can use this thing called the Animation Painter. If I just click this one and click on the Animation Painter, I, you see how it looks like a little paintbrush there? It just added that to each one of these. Okay, I'm going to give, gonna... give one oh. more tip real quick there, Michelle. Okay, sure. You know how uh, the animation painter, when you click it, uh, you can paint to one other object. Here's a tip I'll bet mm -hmm. not hardly anybody here knows. If you double click the animation painter there, you can paint your little guts out all over the place without <laughs> having to click that button again, even across cool. different slides. Thank you. Okay, so cool new trick there. All right, now I had originally had it, this was going to be my whole slide here, and Lon said, that's a little boring. We need a picture in the background. So we are going to go grab one. We'll, we'll just grab one from Pexels, and instead of searching for fruits and vegetables this time, I'll just shoot, uh, search for vegetables and see what we come up with. And I don't know, let's... Let's do something that's kind of colorful. We'll pick this one. And once again, this we'll, we'll use that quick technique uh, where we, where we uh, did the, the cropping business and we cropped it to the aspect ratio of 16.9. All right, and I'm going to just, as you can see, it's coming on, coming up over the Smart art, but no worries, because I'm going to send it to the back, and I use a range here, and I'm just going to send it to the back. Now it's behind here, but it, for those of you who feel like this might be a little too much, like, you know, it's a lot of fruit going on, and then you get a triangle, and, and then the words, there's some new things you can do that Lon and I have discovered in PowerPoint recently, uh, they have added transparencies, so we can click that and make this a little bit more washed out. And that way, this is a little stronger. It comes to the front. 
here. Let's so I just thought point that out cool. that you could not do that in PowerPoint. You could not make an image transparent in PowerPoint until, I don't know, even like the last Office update. So that's another good reason to get the subscription because it automatically updates and gives you new stuff. Yeah, believe us, we're not trying to sell PowerPoint Office 365 because we don't get anything for it, but we really like it. It's, it's really great. So for this last slide here, this is our call to action. And this is where we get people to go from YouTube to an opt-in page that we have set up. Well, Penelope has. Uh, so we, we want to collect their names on a list and we're going to give them something free. So for those of you guys who are saying, how do I get people off YouTube to then start buying stuff from me? Uh, I'm tired of just getting YouTube subscribers. I want to get them on a list, right? So you offer something for free and you create a page and let them know that they can go there and get that freebie. So I'm going to copy that text, head over here and paste this in using the theme. Nice. And let's get rid of this. And let's see, let's see what designer comes up with for this one, just to be quicker about it. Uh, that's something that fits our color scheme here. And maybe, maybe they'll have some, something a little different. I mean, this isn't what I used for the original one, but I kind of like bringing in this color, that, that turquoise color, because that's part of our theme. But you know what, I'm just going to enlarge it. All right, now at this point, if, if I were pretty much done, I just want to let you know that if you felt like changing the color scheme at any time, I thought this was kind of, kind of cool just to show people, I can go back to the slide master if she just decided that she wanted to go purple with this instead of green you know, all of a sudden you, you just pick a purple color scheme and now it's back. But look, now everything is, is shades of purple, which I just love that because then you can try out different things and see what looks better. All right, so now I am, I changed it to purple, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and record this with this purple color scheme. And I am gonna put music in, but I am going to do that uh, at the end. Oh, you know what? I don't want to forget to add in transitions because I love the way transi transitions look between slides. It just adds that little extra uh, animation there and it puts it on all the slides. And I just chose peel for that. So, you know, they've got some really great ones. So I will, I would like to apply them to all the slides. So I just hit apply to all. So now that's that same transition going through all the different slides. Now to make this into a video, I am going to go to slideshow, record slideshow, and then record from the beginning. Now I want to show you something. Um, I have already uh, done this once, as you saw. So in my other one, which I'm going to actually use as my recording one, I have pasted all the narration into the notes. So as you can see, this is the one, and all the narration was just copied from the storyboard and pasted here, and there's a reason for that. And that has to do with being able to see them when you're doing the recording. So let's go back to slideshow. Like I said, record from beginning. You know what, I'm going to have to switch. Hold on one second here. I'm going to have to do uh, the other monitor so that you guys can see. So let's try that again. Slideshow, record, slideshow, record from beginning. Okay, so now you see what's going on in the background here. If I click on notes, you see that the notes are pasted in here for those of you guys that are a little already beyond 40 and need it to be a little louder, a light, uh, larger, <laughs> like me, um, I'm just going to press that and I can make it as big as I want to, but let's just make it like this. And what you want to first do is just make sure that it sees the microphone that you're using. I happen to be using my Logitech headset right now, so that is selected. Um, I don't want to record my camera, but if you want to, you can do that. And the other thing I was going to show you here is if you make a mistake, you can clear it and re-record 
that slide, you know, just that individual slide you're on. So I am going to record this by clicking Start on Recording, and I will use these to move through. You've heard it before, Americans just aren't getting enough fruits and vegetables. And as the foundation of a healthy diet, consider fruits and vegetables your fountain of youth. But the hard facts tell us that over 70% of us are failing to meet their recommended five a day. Hi there. I'm Penelope Green of PenelopesVeggies.com, and I'm here to show you three simple ways to get you eating more veggies and fruits today. Pancakes, waffles, or oatmeal makes it extra delicious, and adding veggies to your eggs helps you get an extra serving or two in the morning. Sometimes it's okay to try grating or pureeing veggies and adding them to muffins, meatloaf, and sauces. And you can make your own vegetable crisps that end up cheaper, healthier, and quite possibly the most fun way to eat your fruits and vegetables. Kale, mustard greens, collard greens will have you crunching and munching away on a delightful twist on greens. Just a few small and very simple changes to make you eat better, feel better, and create an overall new sense of well-being. To learn more and to get your downloadable veggie tip guide, go to PenelopesVeggies.com. Stop. Now, had I been doing it for real, I'd have been rehearsing a few times with it. Uh, I felt like I sounded a little tentative when I was reading some of those, so re rehearsing is great. <laughs> and also, I'd have been doing it most likely with a, a professional microphone, maybe a, um, what is it we use again? I'm drawing a blank. Okay, AT2020. Oh, yeah, or... thank you. AT2020. Uh, there's Blue Snowball, Yeti. You know, there's a variety of them that sound pretty good. All right, now I want to add, a, we may go just a little bit o over because I want to uh, show you how to add music and then save it out as a video. So I'm going to add some music to the background, insert, and I would choose audio. Now I'm going to show you where I got this music in just a second. Um, I have already downloaded some audio on my hard drive and I got it right here um, from TechSmith. They've got some free music at uh, library.techsmith.com assets. And there's a lot of free ones here, and then there's a bunch of paid ones, but there's a lot of free ones. So I found skipping stones in there. And I added it. Uh, I added it, and I uh, w told it to play in the background. You're going to want that and on the first slide, Michelle. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm probably looking... No, I'm in the right deck. You're right. Sorry about that. All right, so the the music I told, let me go back to um, where I was selecting different things. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to go back, go to playback. All right, so now I'm on the first slide. That is where you want to put your music. I'm, I'm telling it to play in the background. That's what I want. I want it to hide during the show. It's going to play automatically choose across all slides and I'm going to choose to have it fade in for you know a few seconds and fade out for a few seconds so now I've added my music all right now the other thing is is that we want to probably um, lower the volume on on this on the music that's going across all you know what this is actually the my uh, voice here so I'm going to raise the volume on the voice uh, the music, I had accidentally, remember, added it into the last slide, so this is actually my music. I would, I would have done it on the first slide, but I am going to lower the volume down on that, so I'm going to go to playback, volume, and I'm going to lower that. All right, so I hope I didn't confuse you. Just remember to put the music in your first slide. So now I'm going to make this into a video, so all you got to do is go File, Export, and for those of you in earlier versions, I think you can do this as early as PowerPoint 2010, uh, you would be choosing Save As. But for me, I choose Export, Create a Video, and then I want to 
it's going to default to this, but I want to use the recorded timings and narrations. Don't worry about what this says. This is, this is what I want, the recorded timings and narrations. And then I'll click Create Video. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already done it uh, already. And it would just hose up. I mean, it might make my audio on the webinar sound funny. It's too many things going at the same time. So it creates a video, and then you end up with uh, I'll show you, you just end up with an MP4, oops, an MP4, I happen to have saved it on the desktop, and there, there it is, it's this, this is what you're going to upload to YouTube, so you can upload it to YouTube, any video sharing site you want to, uh, your, you can get an embed code and put it on your, on your website or, or wherever, so that is how I ended up just adding it to YouTube. And there it is. I'm sure you guys have got lots of questions, which we will answer in just a few minutes. But now I'm going to turn the webinar over to Lon, uh, who will be addressing some of those questions and let you know how you can learn a little bit more information about how to create a video like this on your own. Cool. Well, thanks, Michelle. That was uh, pretty darn good. And you'll be able to watch the replay, of course, and walk through it. In fact, I think what we might do is we'll bundle together uh, all those materials that Michelle used, her resources and her storyboard and stuff, and you guys can work on creating your own as practice. But the key to the whole thing is that the fastest way to learn something and to remove as much of the complexity that some of you may have felt during that process is to kind of go through what we just went through, watching over someone's shoulder that knows how to do it and learning that way. That's really one of the best ways to do it. And to that end, we have created what we call the PowerPoint Video Mastery Series. I'll go over some of the details of that but we'll also have a bunch of nice bonuses with it. Uh, and we talked about design. For those of you who are graphically challenged, we have a couple of really nice resources to talk about what good design is and how to kind of use it. Uh, I also have a three video series that is the ultimate guide to PowerPoint video recording. And also some of the absolute coolest uh, PowerPoint templates with tutorials on how to modify them. There are actually eight inside the, the course itself that I'll show you in just a second. These are just amazing, and you can learn a lot by using a template and then finding out the tips and secrets of how to modify them and make them your own. So what we have in the course are five pre-recorded webinar sessions, and they've all been edited and really made nice and put inside the members area. So this isn't live training. It's five videos that we have recorded, and these basically run the gamut from absolute beginner all the way walking you through becoming a really true PowerPoint master, I'll call it, uh, along with the additional bonuses for design and the tips and other tutorials and templates that we have. Michelle and I have been doing this a long time, and we have, over the course of those years, put together just a whole bunch of additional short bite-sized chunks of, did you know how to do this in PowerPoint? Right? These are the kinds of things that you can add to your knowledge uh, at your own pace and as you progress through what obviously can always be somewhat complex whenever you try to do something new in software that's very powerful. So we've kind of gone through all of that and taken out a bunch of the stuff that's going to trip you up because we've been through it all and we've been teaching people how to use this well, for the last 10 years. So if you basically kind of add that up, it's 239 bucks. but because you're on this webinar today, uh, we're going to run this particular special for a limited time, and you're going to get access to all of the new and updated content for 47 bucks one-time fee. If you go to learncamtasia.com slash PVM, and actually let me put that in the chat box real quick. Uh, because I don't know if I did that, and of course it's backed up by a full 
30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, you're going to get access to our special Facebook coaching group. And I mean, just a whole bunch of good bonuses and excellent content. If you go check out the sales page there, I'm not going to belabor that too much. It's pretty self-explanatory there. It's really our most popular course. Uh, we've sold, gosh, I don't know, well over 1,500 memberships for this particular platform. It's one of our favorite tools that we use, and we just love teaching people how to use it and, you know, interacting with uh, students and customers and things like that. So with that, uh, before we get too hung up into the weeds, I'm going to go ahead and give you a link to that freebie, and then we'll take questions. Okay. I'll put this link in the chat box. And that's going to take you to this special post where you can go ahead and see the sample that I have and click the link, download the template. And then, like I say, I have a full tutorial on how to modify the whole thing. So it's, it's pretty sweet. I think you're going to like it. And you're going to learn a lot about using PowerPoint because I get into some other techniques like using the selection pane and uh, all kinds of cool stuff like that, but it's really pretty simple. Uh, and so I think we got a couple of questions, Michelle. People have asked how long the special is for. Lon didn't say, but it's through Friday night. So today is Tuesday. So, so through Friday night, um, the price goes back to its normal price, which is $97. You can still buy the program. It's it, You'll just pay more. It's not like the program goes away. This is cheap. This is this is like the <laughs> we don't do this too often. So, um, and the things we showed you on the webinar today, you might think, oh wow, that's a lot already to learn. But it's just the tip of the iceberg, really, with the things that we've been able to do in PowerPoint. It is so cool. And so, if you don't have Camtasia, even if you do, you can bring it into Camtasia. You know, we talk about that in the webinars. What we do basically is we we teach you how to do. Um, a, a fairly simple video, a more complex video, and then we show you the, uh, advanced ways of doing all kinds of things in your videos. So we this is simple right here, what Lon and I showed you. you. For those of you who have been using PowerPoint and maybe, maybe say, oh, you know, I already knew uh, you know, some of those things, you'll get access to some things you've never seen, and the templates in there are amazing. Instead of starting with just an empty screen, just a white screen, you can download templates with some pre-done animation that it's just, all I can say is it's amazing. You don't have to do any animation yourself. It's already all in there. Right. Uh, let's see. we got a couple other questions. Bill asks, should we export to MP4 or MOV? I can't really see your answer, Michelle. But I, I said MP4. Right, but I'm going to give a caveat to that. Okay. And again, this is through to a severe amount of experience with this program. There actually, as it turns out, is a potential known bug in PowerPoint where if I'm going to go to File, Export, Create Video, okay, and say Create Video. Uh, what I have generally been doing anymore, especially for slides with lots of animation, is instead of MP4, I drop down and I save it as a Windows Media Video. And those seem to work perfectly. Uh, there's not really too much difference between the two. Windows Media Videos are slightly bigger in size, but they upload fine to YouTube and almost any other video platform uh, should be able to use a Windows Media video also. So if you export your video as MP4 and it looks like, here's the symptom, it looks glitchy, it, you know, it's not smooth like it, it should be, then what you're going to want to do is try that little fix and work around. Okay, what else do we got? Janet says, any advice for Mac users? Uh, we don't own or use Macs, Janet, so we can't support both, all platforms, but essentially, and because we don't use them, I can't specify with all certainty that all of the features on the Windows platform are cross-platform on the Mac, uh, but generally Microsoft's pretty good at that. Um, so that's kind of the scoop on that. 
how did Michelle place the presentation on her website? I didn't understand that step, asked John. Uh, basically, once you spit this out as a video, John, you'll get a video file, you know, a, a regular uh, video file on your computer. And then basically what you do is you just upload it to the internet. I'll use YouTube as an example. You upload your video to YouTube and then you know, you'll have the option to share that link with people or get an embed code uh, right from YouTube and put it on your website. You can host it on any number of other video sharing platforms uh, like Vimeo. You could upload it to Facebook. Um, you know, all if you if you have a like a WordPress blog that fully supports now being able to just you know put a video on your blog posts and pages and stuff like that. So it's really just a matter of uploading it to the internet. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joan asks, sorry if this is already do you already seen? Do you sell a bundle that includes Camtasia training too? Uh, yeah, Joanne, we have full and very comprehensive Camtasia training. If you go to the Learn Camtasia website, there's a purchase courses link there. In fact, we might put that in with the replay email as well, just for people that uh, might want to know. I see if Ants mm -hmm. asked a few times, so. All right, so yeah, with that said, sorry we went over, guys, uh, but I hope it was for a good reason to get all these questions and everything in. Thank you guys so much for coming. You guys take care. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.